Well, coming in, the joke was somebody's going to win, right? The Oilers have lost four in a row. The Flames have lost four in a row. It's uh, the toilet bowl. It's all of this. Somebody's going to win, uh, right? You are. The Edmonton Oilers win the Heritage Classic ah. at Commonwealth tonight. Uh, I don't know if it's impressive fashion, but uh, as we were kind of talking about on the live stream, uh, the right team won. Yep. Uh, the Flames, if they were to win, have won that game, would have needed a bounce or two, and they got the goaltending they needed, but they they didn't deserve two points tonight. No. Um, I don't know. Oiler fans will be happy with it. I don't. Uh, you need a win. They need yep. a win. So they take it. It's where it leaves uh, this other team moving forward. Now that the month of October is over, they sit with a record and for the month, two wins, six losses, and one extra time loss. Two, six, and one's a bad nine game run. It's an awful way to start your season. And the two wins are their only two games they've scored more than two goals. We had Jason Weimer in this summer and his question, which I thought was okay, maybe a little overreacting. It appears to be dead on. Who's going to score the goals here? Uh, Where are they coming? I don't see one player that you can put in pen will score 25 if he's healthy this year. That's a horrifying statement about an NHL team that thought and that we wondered it could be a, a playoff team. It's a night where, thank goodness for people like Mandeep and BK Beaufort Liquor. Really is. I don't know how we would have got through today without uh, his unwavering yeah. support. Although, in fairness, uh, the other night against St. Louis was also a BK Beaufort liquor kind of night. Uh, depends on how you, you look well, at it. BK Beaufort liquor located on the Trans Canada Highway across from Windsport. Beside the McDonald's. Stop in, stock up. Maybe you're heading out of town. That's where you do it. Maybe you're coming back to town. You need to replenish the stock. That's how you do it. Or, regardless, BK Beaufort liquor. Family owned. Proud family run. There you see it. Wine, spirits, craft beer. On Twitter, at BK Liquor. On Instagram, at BK Beaufort Liquor. You said tonight was like a BK Beaufort Liquor type of night. Yeah. It might be a BK Beaufort Liquor type of season. That's, yeah. yeah. I that's know you case. were kind of making that's that That's the point, case, man. Right? Deep, uh, start booking your holidays, your vacations. You can buy well, that new car. more staff because you, yeah. you might have more revenue, but you're going to be working your tail off. I mean, he's going to need new soles on his shoes by Christmas if they're going to play like this. No, I guess, should we be surprised? I mean, we're kind of having some fun with it. Not, I'm not, honestly, I'm not trying to be cheeky or, or anything about it. They, they just, they didn't deserve to win. They have not no. played well enough to win. No. The Rangers game were, they were okay, actually pretty good. Yeah. Right. They were okay in that game, but that's now, I don't, I don't know how much of tonight's game you want to take as quality minutes. Because the start of the of the game was all Oilers. Yep. And the second period was better. The last five minutes of the first, they kind of turned things around. But once, I mean, they got to within a goal. And you feel like maybe you've got a chance. But I don't feel like Stuart Skinner had to do anything no. special. No. The two goals again, that the Flames get are power play goals. So on right. one hand, the power play woes that we've bitched and complained about, well, they got a couple power play goals. So all right, I guess somewhere something to build on but you can't win many games just scoring power play goals and just scoring two goals yeah two is the big thing for me and and remember it was a really advantageous first period for the flames power play in the fact that they got given about three minutes of five on three time uh that was split into two portions they scored on one of those two so they're basically one for three uh this season when they've had more than a minute five on three that's not overwhelming and the other one was late in a power play it didn't feel like the flames came on and took over the game in the first so much as that the penalties dictated they had more men on the ice than mm -hmm. the oilers for a while and then as soon as it got to even strength it was back to the oilers putting the flames in the spin cycle in their own zone yeah what would the oilers have done with those five on five minutes if right. they weren't killing the penalties for that long exactly that um Great Eagle Resort and Casino happy hour. Time to make the most of the day. Spend your afternoons with great drinks and food. Join them at the Stage Bar. We know where the mm. Stage Bar is. Blaze Bar and Grill also there as well. Wherever you're comfortable, have a seat and enjoy happy hour every day from 2 until 5 p.m. Great food, specialty drinks starting at just $5. Visit Great Eagle Resort and Casino.ca for more information. They'd have been doing the old Halloween Howler yesterday oh, at man. the event center. 
Would have been a gooder. Uh, and that happy hour, three hours. That's uh, Don't be fooled by the singular versus plural. Happy hour. Duh. They're using some boomer Rest. math over there. Well done. Serious boomer math. They're like, it's an hour. Like, excuse yeah. me. I, don't, I love what you're doing. I don't want to stop this, but that's 180 minutes. That's more than an hour. That's three hours of happy. The, some of that. the three hours of happy was not the game tonight. No, it was, it was, it was not the, and it could have been much worse were it not for the play of Jacob Markstrom. Uh, I, I mean, I'm again, we're throwing a bunch of the, of the sponsors in here, but he is to me, he's my generous guy for crown Royal. He oh. has been, he's been giving his team a chance when they don't maybe deserve a chance when they're playing poorly, he's holding them in games and there's been the odd soft goal, but I, from where he was a year ago yep. till now, he has improved his play. He has elevated his level where other guys have not. No and doubt. And to me, that makes him a generous guy. Generosity lives in the small things. It doesn't need money or an audience or even acknowledgement. It just needs a few good people. Crown Royal, crown everything. Crown Royal right there. God love you, Crown Royal. It's funny because it's like, wow, who's been the best player? And I think the majority of Flames fans be, oh, it's got to be Jacob Marshall. I don't even know who would be second if you had a vote. Like, I feel like it's a landslide for Jacob Marshall at this point. Wow, like he must be really good. And it's like, yeah, he's kept them in a lot of games. He has one win. <laughs> they played nine. <laughs> like, he's not getting any help. If no. he allows two, they're not winning. They've scored more than two once in his seven starts. The defense, we, and I'm just thinking on the other show, on the main show, we've, I guess we've talked a little bit about defense, but it's, we spent so much time either focused on the, the bounce back for Markstrom or what we're seeing out of Caudry and Huberto. And yep. I guess that's, it's, that's front of the line. That's what you're going to see. And during the live stream tonight, we were kicking it around. It's, it's not been a great start to the season for Chris Tanev. Mm -hmm. I don't think Mackenzie Weger has had a strong start. Zadorov had a rough night tonight. Maybe their worst player tonight. That's a tough time for that. Give Noah it. Hannafin has been kind of up and down. There's been a couple games where it was really shaky for him. That's your, and, and we've got Rasmus Anderson will come in. That will help obviously. And you kind of forget about him when you're watching this, but right now there's, the defensive woes, turnovers galore here. And they weren't, I don't even think they were forced turnovers. They were just, just sloppy. Reckless, reckless all season. Sloppy all play. season. What are you doing giving the puck away all the time? And look, if you want an MVP of the, of the last week, it's, it's Rasmus Anderson. They can't win without this guy. Every game yeah. he's been suspended for a dumb decision on the ice, they've lost. And it, it and feels looking, like and you know what? it's lacking a lot when he's not there because you're seeing a lot of Solovyov or. Gilbert, yeah. like it's it's for a team that is missing a lot of skill when they're full boat, they can't afford no Rasmus Sanderson. They lost every game of his suspension. And I'm not looking to pin it on you, but we've had the discussion about where this team's defense would be, either in the conference or league wide or whatever. They they have as as a collective have not had a good start to this no, season. And, now, do you so do you have any reason to believe? that they can shore these things up and tighten up? Yeah, I think there's a lot more hope that they could be better defensively than there is that they're going to score goals. Like, I just don't see top-end finishers on this team. I do see, like, four absolutely top-four defensemen, unless Tanev is not that anymore. And I guess you could wonder after nine games if he is. But it just looks like a team that structurally doesn't know what they're doing more than it looks like bad players. It looks like sloppy turnover laden mistakes more than like not capable players. It's not like you're running an AHL decor out there. It's like, well, it's the best they could do. It really looks like they're not playing well. They're, they're not. It's we just haven't focused a lot on it because there's other things that are more glaring. Chris Tanev got freight train tonight with a hit. You don't see that. And he got hit twice hard in that St. Louis game. It's very uncharacteristic for him. And then you start to look at it. He's, He's been uneven for sure, and it took Uyghur a while last year to get going like it did for a lot of guys, mm -hmm. but that's – I'm with you. If you're going to start somewhere, if this team's going to do anything, yeah, you're going to have to start – you've got the net kind of taken care of. you got to do better in your own zone and taking care of things in, in the neutral zone. If you're going to tell me this team makes the playoffs, I see one reason how. It has to be 
the goaltender and a defensive backbone. It's not going to be Huberto turning into a 100-point player or Kadri scoring 30 or Elias Lindholm scoring a goal in five straight games. I, I just don't believe those things are probable at all relative to them being able to look like Islanders West, which is something we tossed around when Daryl was here. You know, it's not the sexiest group, but maybe you could just be a stout defensive club. Two seasons ago, no one allowed fewer goals five on five. There really isn't that much personnel change on the blue line. It's the same goalie. It's wild to see this group this sloppy with the puck, this many turnovers, when it really isn't that different. It's the same top four defenseman plus Uyghur. Yeah, it's... Like, what? Yeah. How are you bad defensively? And, and Tanev, to be fair, like, if you're worried about I year of the four-year deal when he signed from Vancouver's free agent, you're like, you know, he's had health issues. Can he stay healthy? You know, the last year might not be great, but as much as I was worried about that deal, it's been a great signing for them. Oh, sure not a has. lot of July ones that yeah. work and four times four and a half, I believe it was, has been a great signing for them. And we talked about it in the live stream. He spent the most of the season playing with a Gilbert, playing with a solo, playing with an Osterly. That's not the same as playing with, you know, Uyghur, Hannafin. Yeah. The only reason and, I bring it up is he's just usually that steadying force. He feels totally. good when he's out on the ice yep. and it hasn't quite been no, the same no. situation. Yeah. And, and the unspoken, like, without saying it, we're all thinking it. This team misses Oliver Shillington yeah. and we don't know anything about the future. I don't know that they're an Oliver Shillington away from being a six, two and one club necessarily, nope. but, but he I would certainly help. think that decor is better if he's there. Uh, there's yeah. no doubt about that. Uh, and as you said, they have not had a win without Rasmus Anderson. So that's not ideal either. Hey, you know what though? It's still fun, right? It's still hockey. We're having a good time. We're going to go to Phoenix in January. You should join us. It's the barn burner vacation, January 11th to 13th, limited spots available. They are selling. Don't wait around. Don't wait around on this. $14.99 per person based on double occupancy includes your flights, your hotel, your transportation to and from the airport. We'll get you to the game, the mullet arena. It's going to be tight quarters in there. We're going to have a hell of a time. I don't playoffs, no playoffs, whatever. We're going to be out of Calgary in January and having, having a time, having a rip. Are you, bud? So there's two um, choices. You could stay in Calgary for January 11th to 13th, or you could go to the desert and watch an NHL game in a 4,500 seat arena and then have a full Friday to yourself in the sun before coming back to the Calgary winner. You decide it's up to you, if yeah. you're with us, you'll be on nationgear.ca purchasing that trip. There it is. Nationgear.ca is the website. You'll find the drop down menu and you'll be able to buy your spot through there. And it is a presentation of Alberta Blue Cross creating memories. There's only one thing better than sharing memories, and that is making new ones. Alberta Blue Cross Travel Insurance protects your memories and more. Wherever travel takes you, visit ab.bluecross.ca slash travel for more information. Alberta Blue Cross, Alberta Blue Cross, celebrating life's memorable moments inspired by hockey. Um, the it, it is hard. I, I I just wrote down here goals. Yeah. And it's it, it's not that they were a huge goal scoring team a year ago. Y you notice <laughs> it's one guy, but. Tyler Toffoli had offensive pop for them. Five on five power play. He was a guy that you felt like was a threat to score when he was in the offensive zone. They have one guy who's a, a potential one shot scorer. And he's a rookie. And, and he's a rookie. <laughs> yeah. I think of the way that guys have to score. And I see Lindholm playing with playmakers. He doesn't have one on his wing right now. I think of Manjapani having to go to dirty areas and get it second and third pucks in a crease. They're not creating enough second and third chances. And it's like, you can't just create that on your own. Toffoli last year led this team in goals with uh, 34. Nobody else had 25. Nazem's a year older, not looking more effective. Lindholm has weaker line mates. Like, I, I just, I don't see the path to the the dam breaking and this offense coming to life. Yes, they're going to score more than two goals, but they're going to be a bottom five to 10 team in this league scoring this year, unless something dramatic changes. Sharon Govich, a lot of tools there. Still doesn't look like a 25 goal guy that we saw in his sophomore season. 
and they got to figure out what he is and what he's best suited doing. Right now, they're using him on the fourth line in the penalty kill. Yeah, it's uh, it's it, and and I don't know. I, I I guess at this point, you look at what Ryan Huska has done. He's tried every combo in the book. It's it's not working. I don't know if you look at it and say don't just don't bother, or if you if that's giving up, or what the strategy is. But you had Hunt on a line with Elias Lindholm to start this hockey game. What are we doing? You 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 really can't expect that to be. And, and just to be clear, combo. Dryden Hunt couldn't crack this lineup last year. He was added in exchange for Redim Zahorna. And it's not a shot against Hunt. He is no. what he is. No, he's but no different than he was last year. That's my whole point. He's the same guy. He's a hardworking guy that can be a fourth liner in the NHL. You're starting on your top line. Something's gone horribly wrong. When you're goal starved and you've lost four in a row, the answer is probably not putting Hunt with Elias Lindholm. Maybe it's maybe it's you're, you're sending messages. I don't know. I am very curious what this is going to be for for Huska moving forward. It's it's a shitty spot to be in when you're a rookie, any coach. But yeah. here he is trying to come in, and Rhett talked about it last week. You don't want to rip these guys. You don't want to give them shit. You kind of want to be – you don't want to take the mood and morale away. But it, yeah. I feel like it's got to be gone. You've lost five in a row, including now, to your provincial rivals on a in a showcase type of a game. Yeah. There's no fun, regardless of what you're trying to do. No, I feel for Huska. I feel for Conroy. I feel for Mark Savard. I feel for Micah, Michael Backlund. Because all these guys Why do you probably... Feel for Backlund? Pardon me? Why do you feel for Backlund? Those other guys have very limited ability in impacting what's going Michael on. Michael Backlund's lines has been one of the best in the NHL by shot share so far this season. And I'm not saying he was great tonight, but he had to play against Connor McDavid most of the night. And he's not making 10 and a half or seven or nine. Well, either are the coaches. Um, I just, I've, I correct, kind of so weird just let you. me finish my point so that all those guys doing their best might not matter at all. Because I just don't think this team's good enough, no matter how much your leadership captain in or coaching or GMing or power play scheming. I don't see it. Yeah, it's the coaches are going to be judged one way and the players will be judged another. I just think of for Mark Savard, when he goes to bed tonight, does he sleep soundly because they scored two power play goals tonight? No, Probably God. not, right? No, it's not. Yeah. it's so much of a of a bigger deal. Yeah, and we'll I'm not trying to absolve anyone. I just think that like you're not a third line center being a little bit better away from being good. Your stars that are supposed to be your stars look like pedestrians mm -hmm. passengers um if, if you're counting on your third line center to be your best player there's a whole lot of mistakes higher up on the depth chart here and i'm not trying to say that michael's been a great captain it's a nine game sample i'm just saying he can be doing the best he can do huska can be doing the best he can do conrick can be doing the best he can do and savar can be doing the best he could do if their best players aren't gonna be the best players this team is screwed and they might be in trouble, even if those guys weren't performing. But right now, it is uh, it, it does seem pretty bleak. We'll take a look now at the road ahead for Village Honda. They, of course, are located in the Northwest Auto Mall and online at villagehonda.com. Uh, there are there are there are boys, our boys and girls, up in the Northwest Auto Mall. Huge selection of used vehicles, all makes, all models, all budgets. Seventy units on site. Access to more than four hundred more inside the dealer group. Make Village Honda your one stop automotive destination in Calgary. They're worth the trip. Village Honda, located in the Northwest Auto Mall. All right, here it is, Dino. Uh, flames are off. You know what they really need is some time to think about this game where they were completely manhandled in the first and on a national stage, lost to their biggest rival in franchise history uh, rather decisively without the help of some power plays. This ain't close. Uh, Wednesday, they're back home against cup contender Dallas. Right into this, uh, well, Ottinger. I, I want to say scar tissue, but they did win that series, although it was a Johnny field win in game seven of overtime that's the one home game before they head out to seattle first trip of the season to the emerald city where the kraken haven't been off to a great start that's the one saving grace in the pacific dean no one outside of vegas has looked really sharp out of the gate uh that seattle seattle game is on saturday they then come home for nashville before a three-game roadie yeah. toronto ottawa montreal nice to get into those big canadian media markets in the middle of a cooler or you turn it around. These are your options. Dallas currently sits four, one and one on the season. I would guess they will play before 
that they Wednesday play game. in Edmonton the day after, so they won't be on a back to back here. Yeah. They may play Monday in theory. Yeah. Tomorrow. Uh and Seattle, for what it's worth, two, five, and two. But yeah, they are the <laughs> there are no winnable games when you're God no a team right now. But if you were going to hope that there's a fighter's chance, that might be it. But with maybe this club will show a little bit of what there was from last year, where the games you didn't think they had a lick at or a hope they come out and play well. I just don't know what's going to turn it. That's the road ahead once again for yeah. uh, for Village Honda. Next game is coming up on Wednesday against Dallas. New in stock inventory on the ground. Start your automotive adventures at Village Honda. New vehicle pricing, as always, is MSRP. Uh, I, I uh, what I have here. What changes? What yeah. a, a, and we've we've talked about the line combos changing, but if you're if you're Craig Conroy, or if you're just looking at, to avoid this being one of the worst seasons in franchise history, what can you do? Do you scratch healthy scratches, lineup changes? Do you jettison in a couple guys like a Klapka and a Zeri? Do you mm. what? What possible options? And again, a lot of that's cap related. Some of it you can't yeah, do. Yeah, totally. What, yeah. What are, what options are at their disposal to try and get a spark here? Uh, these lines look gross, but they're gross because a lot of guys aren't playing well. I, I don't think it's a that Husk has got a bad paintbrush here. Mm. Uh, like he's not a bad painter. There's just there's nothing. Who's playing well that you can put together right now? They have one line they can trust and a fourth line that gives you energy. That's it. So I, I don't know that the lineup tweaks are the answer. I would hope you could play better as a unit, as a five-man unit on the ice, defensive, like they're just turning the puck over like crazy, bad decisions. Uh, the goaltending is the only thing you'd want to keep the same, right? Yeah. Like, and maybe it's okay. You've got two days here. Nothing is scheduled as an off day. Maybe it's some practice. You had one game, then you had a five-game roadie. Then you're back for two games and three days at home and up for this big, like, could you have a normal couple practices? Maybe that'll help something. This is a roster construction issue for for me at this point. I, I I don't expect you to stumble into a forty goal guy here. Uh, we'll do the Betway highlight of the night. I, I, oh, I, I don't like being super cheeky, <sighs> but you do I, sometimes. Sometimes I do. This is it's a little smarmy, but for <laughs> Betway, bet the responsible way with Betway. Get the Betway app on your phone. Nineteen or over in Ontario. So mm. let's take a look at our highlight of the night courtesy of Betway. Uh, it was our first look at the jerseys. Uh, there's good Dan Vladar. Good looking, looking sharp. jerseys. I like those pants. The socks look good. I Tukes. definitely think you said we said they won the jersey battle today. I was not mm -hmm. a huge fan of what Edmonton was doing. I get what they're trying to do, but I think those look smashing. Uh, they were the more disciplined team. They had the better night on the power play. They were better dressed. Just three big W's for the Flames uh, tonight on those fronts. The jerseys were sensational. That's your highlight of the game for better. Right? Look at the I just the, the name bars look look great. Look good, feel good, play good. Is socks are good. Tukes are good. That's that's a, that's a tight setup. Much better than their Ronald McDonald outdoor game unis. I think decisive. So, we can agree on that. That definitely better than the last outdoor game setup. So that would be your Betway highlight of the night. Mm. Thank you, Betway. <laughs> Official we... gaming partner of Afterburner. Definitely. Thank you, Betway. And, and also, dropped also, the also, puck and it was, uh, yeah, I know. also, we're sorry that we, I know, but you know, um, and, and I guess just to find, kind of finish up that point, you can bring in, and it's no disrespect. You can get Connor Zary and Adam Klapka. Yeah. But what a, that's not the answer either. The uh, the the, and I don't. I just can't imagine that there's a trade out there. Only no, Craig. God, no. But I I don't. It's the guy said it this week. The answer, if there is one, mm -hmm. is in that locker room. No it's one's walking and through true. that door totally. to save your season. You can look around the room, boys. Because whatever this team is going to be this year is going to be on the backs of who's in that room. End of story. There, yeah. I, I mean, what's the trade doing? Are are you giving up future assets to bring in someone to help now? Like, absolutely not. Can't, yeah. 
<laughs> no, like, are you kidding me? No if there's a trade, it's probably going to be a, we'll give you someone who's in the NHL. Now you give us prospects. And like, I, it's absolutely those guys in the room that are the only way this even begins to turn around. And like you said the other day, it's not like they're playing well and not being rewarded. They're still at the playing poor and losing phase of this. How bad are we life cycle? Like yeah, they're, they, no, they're I, not out chancing teams they're like, oh, gosh, darn it. They just didn't get any bounces tonight. That's not it. Like maybe against Washington or Pittsburgh, you can sell me that. Not since. They've been outclassed in every game. And it's a unique game, this whole thing. So the Oilers would have had their emotions. The Flames would have as well. They'd be have family in from out of town and all of that. But that game against St. Louis the other night was dreadful. Mm-hmm. And I said on the show the next day, one of the main things I really that disturbs me the most from that game is they had the Zadorov comments and the Coleman. I it suck. It sucks to lose. I'm tired yep. of losing. We too many individuals. And then they came out and said, "Oh yeah, I guess you, you guys are you're absolutely right about that. We do have issues because the effort and the performance was dreadful. Yep. Now they piggyback that, or I guess they come out of that game mm-hmm. that was horrendous." I guess they were better in this game, but as a response to that, what did you see? And I don't know that they were better. Again, if you don't give them those five on threes, if this game stays five on five, it might be four, nothing Oilers. Like I just, I'm not really sold that because you had a couple shifts where you spent some time in the ozone, that that was a good effort. Um, St. Louis is a team that might not make the playoffs. I, I would suggest it's probably less than 50% by the sports wagering odds. Everyone thinks Edmonton's going to figure this out and be in the playoffs. At least that's the vibe I have at this point. St. Louis was a game where it's like, you didn't even have to be anything special. You just had to not shoot yourself in the foot and play your game. And I I still don't know what that is for this group because I don't think we've seen it since. Have we seen it? Like they got outplayed against Winnipeg. Markstrom, Markstrom was minute. brilliant in that first period. Uh, Devin Levi was atrocious against Buffalo. Those are the two wins. It's Washington, not a, you outplayed him a bit, but yeah, then you collapse. I, I, uh, it's not a great... Feels like piling on, but... It's not a great spot. They don't look like they're breaking through. No, no. And again, I, I don't want to pile on Zadora because I like when guys are not afraid to, to talk about the things that we all know are happening. Like, don't don't just say the politically correct things. He was awful tonight. And he wasn't the only flame that wasn't good, but God, if, if you wanted to buy stock in Zadora of the leader, this would have been a great night to come out and be gangbusters and have some heavy hits and really dictate. He was a turnover machine. Yeah, I, I, and you know what? I don't, I don't really give a shit. Whether the, nobody nobody's playing, if that's the, if that's the credo, then no mm-hmm. one should be talking or saying a word. No, no I, one is playing. Markstrom would be the only guy who yeah. should stand in front of a microphone and say, "Guys, we need to be better." He's backed up any his performances yes. has been worth. And again, I love Zdorov saying that stuff. You just would feel so much better if he really was like a force yes. out there, and he was a force for evil, not for good tonight. And that doesn't mean he won't be strong when they play against Dallas. It is part of being the, the big cat, the roller coaster. The, there's a lot of highs. There's a lot of crazy. That's been his game. That's probably why he's on his fourth team. He you was know, a you top said it, 15 pick, right? Like there's no lack of tools here. He's on his fourth team because it's always been a bit of this. The great stuff, there's tools all over. He can destroy guys. He skates well. He can dangle. And then it's like, oh, I'm last man back. I did something idiotic. Red light. The other thing is, too, he's never been on good teams. He was in Buffalo when they stunk. He went to Chicago. They were no good. Colorado was no good when he was there. He's never been part of a good team. It would have been <laughs> Which, the, the the year against when they still had Gaudreau and company, when he and Goodbranson yeah. were the twin towers on that third pair. That was his best year of his career. It was Goodbranson's yeah. best year of his career. Free agent. You said it in the other, when we were doing the game tonight, the stream, that he is a guy who cares. Yes, I do believe those. that his give a shit meter has that he has a pulse that way, which I can't say for everybody right now. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I don't, I'm not trying to pile on and be like, damn it, if if only their number five defenseman was better. Like, I, I like the player. It's just, uh, yeah, it's 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 one of a lot of names where you're just like, how is how how are we here right now? Like, who's having a good year that's not named Markstrom? 
So it'd be a good time for Hungry for More from DoorDash. DoorDash. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app. Choose what you want from where you want, when you want it. Your items will be left safely outside your door. For a limited time, our listeners get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more. Download the DoorDash app. Enter the promo code NATION25, NATION25 to get that amazing deal. You're going to spend 15 bucks. I mean, who's you're getting DoorDash for less than 15? Get some food, get some drink, get it, get it going. 25% off and zero delivery fees. Nation 25 is the promo code. If you're getting 25% off free delivery, you should Make it worth your while. spend Let's more go. than 15 bucks. Let's mm-hmm. go here, fellas. Like that's that's not even Boomer Math knows that. Let's go. Right. You're, getting, you're getting a quarter off, make it an order. Here again, uh, tough not to be cheeky. Well, Red who... said it the other night, and I, I thought we like you gotta go back to the well. They need to score more. We are hungry for more goals. Does somebody want to like Manch Penny had the nice start? Where are we at, Elias Lindholm? You scored 40 in this league? Yeah, it's... He is, he's a fascinating study to me because he has that expiring contract, and I can't imagine he's looking at things right now and saying he's... Where's a pen? Cr- get Craig on the phone because I want to sign here mm-hmm. long term. It I assume been an overwhelming, like, you need to sign this guy because he absolutely makes everyone around him better and he is a number one center. The more I look at him, the more I think he can be a number one center if he has an elite winger. But if he doesn't, he's going to be a number two center on a championship type team, like a Bergeron light. That's what I see when I look yeah. at, at, at Lindholm. And I don't know that that commands nine. And we saw it two years ago. He can be an elite player. With have, an elite winger or two. That, that kind of production when he's playing with elite players. Yeah. So maybe that's not his fault. Maybe no. there are teams out there that would give him eight and a half, nine million dollars because they need a centerman because they've got wingers who centerman can't get them the puck. Maybe he's that guy. I don't know. But to your point, I can't imagine that Lindholm is saying right now that he wants to stay. And with every passing you? game, Conroy's got to be looking at it and saying, I can't. I can't. I don't think I can. You can't lock into an older mediocre team that's capped out. That is peak pain. You turn him into a pile of assets, make it a first, make it three seconds, make it a, a prospect in a first, like whatever you can get, get it. Because when this team will be competitive again, if they're going to look like they did for the first nine games this year, he's going to be 33, 34. <laughs> yeah. And I do think he's one of those guys that would give, he'll give you good quality minutes into the late stages of his career. I think you could have him in his mid thirties and beyond and still feel at, he's not going to be worth the cap hit, but you could sign him long-term and still get serviceable time out of him. Mm-hmm. But is it the right thing to do? There's so many, there's so many things about this team and this team right now that would seem to make it very hard to sign this guy to a contract. I, I, there's two people that need to want it to happen. It's Craig Conroy and it's Elias Lindholm. And I just don't know which of them right now is really jacked to do this. Like who is really excited to lock into this. And we've never really heard Lindholm speak in glowing terms about coming back. He's just kind of said, Oh, well, we're talking. Oh yeah, of course I'd want to come. There's never really been Mm -hmm. any kind of warmth in that regard. No, and that's so it's, that's probably fair. He's being a businessman about it. Yeah, that's for yeah. my agent. Like I'm not, I'm not here to give a deal. And to be fair, I think both sides would probably say, you know what, a fresh start might be the best. And if I'm Elias Lindholm, who would be? Who would be here with a team that is two six and one? You had a fringe NHLer as your winger mm-hmm. to start a this showcase game. You've played with all kind. Of, are you not thinking? I am ready for a, for a change. Yeah, and what kind of team adds an Elias Lindholm at the deadline? Oh, it's a Colorado. It's a Boston. It's a Toronto, Dallas. Like, It's not like yeah. he has to go to Columbus like Johnny did. He's going to get moved to a very favorable environment if he gets traded this year because, hey, the teams that make deadline acquisitions are going to the playoffs. Well, you know what? Are I was... good hockey teams. What were the Islanders last year when they traded for Horvat? Because I was going to say the only difference might be if it's a team that feels like we can sign him to a long-term deal. We love this sure, player. We yeah. don't want to wait. And if it's um, a fit, why not? If you're Lindy, right? Yeah. And that's what it was with Bo. He, they, he had scored at a crazy pace with Vancouver 
it almost priced him out of Vancouver in a way because they paid JT Miller. He's on pace for 40 or 50 early in the year, something crazy. And the Islanders were playing well with Soroka and a Vesna candidate net, but couldn't score. So it, it was just a good fit of what he was doing that year and what they couldn't do. And he gets there. Lou famously said, uh, it's too much term and it's too much money <laughs> when he was asked what the terms were. Yeah. Like, how how do you not see that happening here? He's going to go to a team that's making a playoff push or to bolster themselves as contenders or someone screwed something up, in my opinion. There it is. Hungry for more, a presentation of DoorDash. 25% off. Why wouldn't you? The promo code NATION25, NATION25, 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of 25, or sorry, of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and have have some goodies delivered right to your door. Mm. We did that tonight delivery. for the live stream. Yeah, you did. Contact list delivery right to the studio in Marta. A couple pies. Mm. Dash that for the win. Nation Thank you, 25. DoorDash. Nation 25. Nation 25. Um, I don't know. I, I am. I feel like I've tried to give the benefit of the doubt, and not many people. And I'm not trying to give myself credit, but I just. I don't know what how it all ends for Jonathan Huberdo. We talked about it last week. You yeah. keep waiting for there to be one game where you see the flash. Of yeah. old Jonathan Huberdo. Something that shows you, okay, there's a world class play. There's something that, okay, there it is. We haven't mm -hmm. seen a goal, a pass, a play, nothing nifty, nothing crafty or flashy. I yeah. don't get it. And everybody said the right things. Ryan yeah. Huska, we talked, he's going to have a bounce back. He's good. We're going to put him in a position to succeed. We've talked to him. He feels great. He's excited to come back. He's been talking to guys on the team and getting their cell phone numbers. He's been doing this and that. Yeah. There hasn't been a shift, a moment, anything where you feel like there's any, any hope or any, any reason to believe that he's yeah. going to get it going. The right sample now, a, size, a point is, a game player, like it's like just get a point per game, a point no. per game. I, I, I don't, I, I don't know, I don't know what's happened. He's played eighty-seven games as Calgary Flame, and I would challenge people to tell me about the Jonathan Huberto statement game. He's played eighty-seven games in a Flames uniform. Eighty. I, honestly, the, like, like, how do you go that long? I feel like the discussion around this team. It's that we're now asking a lot out of some people that to basically not be themselves because I feel like most of this fan base is resigned to the fact that Jonathan Huberto will never look anything like a guy that averaged a point per game plus over the last five seasons. That's wild how quickly that turned. And it's not going away soon. It's all signing bonus money. You can't buy this thing out. There's 7.9 years left on that deal. Like it is a nightmare. And I feel for the guy. I don't think he's not trying, but the only time you notice him today is a turnover. Where was the play he created? Even on five on threes, it's like, it's not moving the needle. He's just a guy. Yeah, it's literally that. The, the only time you see him is a turnover or a play or going offside, which he did again tonight. I, 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 I don't know that I've seen anything quite like it. Obviously, when James Neal came in, he was a 20, 25 goal guy, and it mm -hmm. didn't work. I'm yeah. sure it's happened, but not to this level yeah. where it's a, you know, you're flirting with a max contract. Yeah. No, it's it's the highest paid guy <laughs> in the history of the franchise. It's the biggest salary ever handed out. It's also all in signing bonuses every July 1. <laughs> He's making like less than league, like a million bucks a year on his AAV because – Alan Walsh had the last GM by the short and curlies and used all his leverage, but nobody could have thought it would have gone this bad. The greatest drop in NHL history, point totals one season to the next. Yeah. He was absolutely in the right place at the right time because if the Flames weren't coming off a, whatever it was, eight, nine day stretch where Gaudreau left and Kachuk said he wanted out, there's no way Brad Living signs him to that contract before he puts a sweater on. There just isn't. And yeah. Rhett doesn't agree. And I, it's easy. Hey, 
he was right. Rhett was absolutely right. Yeah. But I do, I, I get the rationale behind it. I do too. Your team and your city was getting kicked in the nuts over and over. Here was a guy who would stay. You were prepared to spend big money on a star forward. Okay, if it's not Gaudreau, then it can be Huberto. And here you are. You pay $10.5 million to players that change games. 88 games now is a flame. It's what, you, what I said about a moment or, or that. I oddly remember the first game he played. There was a play along the wall where he was facing the glass and made a yeah. no-look backhand pass. And I don't know who he hit, but I remember even the crowd was like, oh, it was like, here's this play. Yeah, this, this is preseason last year. This is it. This All is the right. best passer the Flames have ever had, Daryl said. I don't know if he was tongue-in-cheek or not. Well, you know he was. was. Yeah. Well, in Shit. hindsight, it looks like that. But, I mean, Daryl was wrong about some other things, too. Um, but he's also been absolved in this process. But, yeah, it's just nobody could imagine this precipitous tailspin. Like, how could you imagine something, a drop-off this big? I don't know how you could. And it's not just point production. It's the eye test. It's every, I, I can only imagine it's every analytic out there. Oh God, he's a turnover machine. <laughs> he's yeah, just, no. he's falling. It's not like he right gets on the, the ice and they outchance the opponents and outshoot them. And yeah, it's just bad puck luck. So, uh, How's and, this and the draft other class, Dean? What's the top five look like? <laughs> and the other thing was that. <laughs> Huska and Conroy and everybody was had his back. This is this guy's going to turn yeah, around. To, this right? is going to be this is going to be a big season, and maybe it still will be. But I just can't imagine how it begins. Coming up, keep listening, keep watching. We are going to be unveiling the uh, Wendy's daily face-off survivor for this. Every day, it's another round. You pick a player. He gets a point. You're alive. You keep rolling. You keep rolling. At the end of every week, Wendy's is going to pick some people, hand out some unbelievable prizes. Maybe maybe it's a bunch of burgers. Maybe it's maybe you're going to try the new Wendy's barbecue bacon cheeseburger. Is there anything about that? that uh, barbecue? Mm -hmm. Bacon? All that. Yeah. Bacon, cheeseburger. Burger. Decent. Barbecue. It all kicks off very soon. You'll sign up. You'll play the daily face-off survivor pool, and you could be winning weekly prizes. Available. I, again, might be tomorrow. Just keep listening because when it starts, you're going to be all in. We're going to be all in because I like burgers and I like winning. Although I don't know if we can win because we're kind of. We'll try. And if they tell us we can't, don't then you'll have to bring those burgers back that you haven't eaten yet. Any fine print here? I'll have to look. My eyes are bad as you know. Sign up for Wendy's daily face off survivor pool. Details on how to do that coming in uh, the next few days. The. Uh, so they would they will come home and practice for the next couple of days and then it's Dallas. Um yeah. the the road ahead isn't ideal, but I I I think that they probably need to play either they need to really get shit pumped by some really good teams, or maybe it is the really good teams that draw the best out of them. I haven't seen that yet. We don't know. Right? Who they played that's good. They haven't. Well, I mean, Pittsburgh, like the Rangers. What do you think of Pittsburgh? And they the played Rangers really hard team. against. No, the Rangers are the only team that's in the Cup Contender yeah. mold. And if they were okay you against buy the Rangers. Into the rough start for the Oilers. Otherwise, they were the other. And they played hard against the Rangers. And it just looked like once the Rangers got that Kreider power play goal, it was only it was academic. Like they were going to win. It was just how they were going to win. Um, they haven't. They've had a soft underbelly of their schedule. They played nine games. Three were playoff teams last year, and one of them was Winnipeg, who went in on a two-month skid. Like, you played six teams that didn't make the playoffs last year. You have two wins. Because you've got – now, we know, I mentioned Dallas is 4-1-1. One, one. We looked at the road ahead for, uh, for Village Honda. Um, in Seattle on Saturday, back home to take on the Preds, mm -hmm. who I don't – I mean – Okay. They worked their tails off. That's not an easy one. Like you said earlier, there's no freebies here. It's a weird month. They played Dallas three times this really? month. The Nashville Predators twice. That's a full season series. Um, then they do that road trip where they'll go Toronto the next night, Ottawa, and then a two day break before they play Montreal. A couple of home games, and then it just doesn't shape up 
as a great month schedule wise. No. There's a lot of travel and it's wonky travel um, back and forth a bit here. Vegas is coming in, but yeah, they play, they play Dallas at home on the first in Dallas on the 24th home to Dallas on the 30th. All right. But again, um, how's this draft class looking? <laughs> it's still October. And that's the horrifying part. And it's hard. It's not my job to do it. And everybody's free to do whatever they want. And I'm not here to spin you one way or the other. But to be in October before Halloween and it feels this dark. Yeah. I don't, I'm sure, I'm sure it has. I don't recall it being quite like this where I think in the past you were waiting for someone to come out of a funk or goaltending to get better, or they should, they're not playing up to their level. Yeah. I'm not sure what their level is. I don't know how much. What does their best game even look like right now? They're not going to lose every game, but this doesn't look like a team that as soon as he gets healthy or as soon as this happens, they'll start to roll. They're not a Shillington or an Anderson away from a five or six game winning streak at this point. No, it doesn't feel like it. Yeah. No, I mean, it's. I still think the only way this team's competitive is if they really tighten up systems and they're tough to score on, but they haven't been that. They've been turnover machines, lots of odd man rushes tonight. They, they got lucky on the officiating, in my opinion, tonight, uh, and that maybe made it look closer than it even should have been in a 5-2 loss. Mm. Derek Newman of Newman Dean's Real Estate Group with CIR Realty. Buying or selling, let Derek do the work for you. The email address to get a hold of Derek, dnewman at cirrealty.ca, or you can give him a call, 403-619-6661. Complimentary in-house home staging consultations. Low pressure, easy to work with, accountable and available. Is it your first time home purchase? Maybe you've bought or sold several. He's your guy. On the selling side, they'll do a pre-listing consultation and help you every step of the way. Also, the ability, maybe homes aren't even on the market yet. Mm -hmm. He's got the intel. You know, these people are thinking of putting their home on the market. He'll he'll do the work for you. Whether you're buying or selling, Derek. Derek Newman. D. Newman at CIRrealty.ca. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Any flames might be selling their homes in the next six months. Well, I was going to say something along those we lines. Get a, we get a but, referral uh, for when uh, Hannafin puts his place up. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. Um, uh, this this feels closer to rock bottom than St. Louis on on Thursday. Is that a positive? Maybe it's because we've we're doing because we did the live stream. Yeah, there's and, that too. and all of this it does feel a little more forced here. We we've really talked about it, Steve, for four hours now. That that Not game against St. Louis, they couldn't complete a pass in the second period, and they did turn the puck over. And but I can't. I I, I don't feel like you can sit here and give them a ton of credit. They weren't well, a bounce. What did away they do from, today? They got a bunch of power plays scored on two, and it still wasn't close. That Dayhard A goal is. I mean, it skips off the ice. It goes right up to the crossbar and down. That's an unfortunate bounce, but you got a pretty good bounce on the tip from Kadri. Yeah. You, you were very fortunate to be in a one goal hockey game for as long as you were. And I don't think there was any, there was probably no shock from anyone watching on TV or anyone in the crowd when the Oilers went up by two again and you knew it was lights out because they oh, yeah. cannot Right now, they, they just do not look like a team that can score more than two, two goals a night. St. Louis, that was the one where it's like 2 nothing, and you could just see they thought they were beaten. And Mackenzie Weger postgame alluded to the, the their will being broken. It's like, guys, when it's 2 nothing, like one goal now means any shot could be a game tire. Like it's that whole bloop and a blast thing in baseball. Like to feel out of it at 2 nothing in the second period on Thursday – like that 4 2 goal tonight was like, well, yeah, this thing's obviously over now. Yeah. This is a better team than St. Right. Louis. And you're on the road, and the officials have already probably owing the Oilers some calls, not you. Like it just, it's curtains. I feel for Huska in a way. Big time. Because there's not I, much oh, he not can in do. A way, the whole way. Because um, like, this, is, this is the dream job. You get your NHL head coaching start. And there was some reason to believe that a change in mood, that there were better days ahead, not worse. And it has been mm -hmm. absolutely worse. So what, as you're sitting in a, 
a seat on an airplane coming home tonight, you have to just be thinking, this is, this is not what I expected or signed up for. I feel for him. Yeah. I, I, I kind of wonder a bit about that. Like we, we, when we talked about where this organization was at this past summer before Conroy was hired, before Huska was hired, when it felt like, you know, Daryl's in the crosshairs here, Brad has left and uh, it felt like Brad or Daryl and then Brad's gone. To me, Huska was a hire that could go both ways. If you were going to develop young players, he could do that. Mm -hmm. But you also wanted to give this group one more chance without the storm cloud, which was, you know, Daryl making it miserable to show up. Now, to be fair, they deserved for it to be miserable when they showed up at work last year. They were no good. But if you can change a coach and it costs you $8 million, million, and if you buy out Jonathan Huberto, it's going to cost you $80 million. Like, we know why you pick one, not the other. Huskas got some time here. They're not oh, yeah. going to put three coaches on payroll. It hasn't gone how you'd wanted, but he's going to be measured not by Caudry and Huberto. He's going to be measured by how does Matthew Coronado progress? You know, what can you get from S- Soloviev if he's around for a while? Can you start bringing some of these young guys in to look like good players? Now, look, if we're all way wrong and these nine games are the worst they play all year and they're a playoff team, we're way off here. But I, I don't put Kadri at his feet. I don't put Huberto at his feet. And he is, if you're going to hire a guy, probably a guy you'd paint to be really good with young kids, teaching them the right way to play and, you know, attention to detail and things like I feel for him that it hasn't gone well, but it's not like he's on a hot seat of sorts. Because no, and to be clear, I'm not saying coaches. No, I'm not I'm just, saying you are. It's just that yeah. like when they hired him, he could do two things. He was going to give these guys fresh air, but it wasn't like he was the wrong coach for a bunch of young kids, which you're you're going to be if it doesn't work. It's just the the human level. Because when we talked to him this summer, he was talking about the nervous energy and then you didn't hear back from Craig and yeah. he's working out in the yard, just kind of, God, is this going to happen? And then you finally get it and you think you raise a, a glass of champagne, your first NHL job, mm-hmm. and there's no joy here at all. You are, you, you've never, you haven't had a moment, I guess, against Winnipeg, but you have not had a second really to enjoy the fact that you're here doing your dream. Welcome to your dream job. You're not going to sleep and you're, you've, you've got a big steaming pile that's been dropped right in front of you here. Like this is, is a mess you've been handed. And it, oh, do you want to leave? You want to go get groceries or go see a movie? Oh, d- don't bother. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, have you thought about using Coronado as the What's point man? Or like- the power play. Greta, it's our afterburner home away from home for viewing parties throughout the season. Grab a cocktail, maybe something from the menu. Let the games begin or maybe... You get into the game for yourself. Over 50 arcade games from vintage to state of the art. Load some credits up on your Greta game card and get at it. Greta Calgary, located at 213 10th Avenue Southwest. You can check them out online for more details. GretaBar.com. Look for some information coming two and a half weeks until we have the nugget. And what is what is the nugget payment for those that don't know what's going on? Well, Dean, I need to eat 42 nuggets and one sitting now i've seen the nuggets they're larger than regular nuggets they're not regulation yeah these aren't uh from it's not clown food these are these are not regulation they're almost more like a boneless wing than a nugget right disagree yeah and uh, you know what a fair guy would say you know what let's prorate let's figure out a, a happy medium that's not you is it no no what I was thinking is we could weigh 42 clown nuggets and then just get that same weight of Greta nugs. Well, so I'm not we, sure. Uh, not sure we have a scale for uh, Breasty does. It's <laughs> so unfortunate. Yeah, but it only goes up to three bills. GretaBar.com. Greta, arcade, bar, street food. If you've not done Greta, there's nothing quite like it. It's, oh, it's the, awesome. Yeah. The Greta experience. You will have a blast. So, mid November. See you there. Can't wait. The outdoor game come and gone. It's five straight defeats for the Calgary Flames. As we said, uh, somebody's going to win this game, right? It's all four Erasmus suspensions. It's uh, it's four losses in a row. Yeah. Not ideal. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, it's five losses in a row. You're right, because it's Columbus. Yeah, it's five, yeah. Homestand. Oh, my God. They lost the one before the Erasmus. That's right. It was the end of the Columbus game. Pindermath. (sighs) Too much mineral water. In fairness. 
It's getting to be a big number. It's a crooked number. Only five losses in a row. Uh, I will be back on uh, on Wednesday. As you've gotten well done, uh, you've gotten out of Wednesday night's uh, afterburner. I just can't wait for tomorrow's show. We really have some time to chew on the fat with this uh, Flames Oilers outdoor game. I'm going to go back and watch it all over again in real time. Right. Just yeah. kind of because it's possible that we missed some stuff. Maybe we were too hasty. Can we get two guests tomorrow? I know we're due for Frank, but like we've we've beaten this dead horse pretty thoroughly. There's there's going to be a win at some point, and that sounds right now. I get it if you're a, if you're a fan that's watching or listening, and you feel like how, where, when, how, but things do happen in the game. You do win consecutive games in a row. You do go on runs. You go on skids and all of that. And like yeah. you said, maybe this is the worst stretch of the season, but it's hard to to think that's the case, and it's hard to feel like there's much hope right now. If We've been vomiting fan. rainbows for a week on these programs. It's just been super positive and... Are there any... Is there any stuff, Jack? I see Daryl was... Uh, he would come on the show. I don't know that... Yeah. Um, Make no mistake, he's enjoying himself. He's getting paid not to coach and is watching. You're watching the regulars the other day. They had pictures of him in the stands. Yeah, and he uh, he did. He got drugged through the through the mud. It was his fault. Unlike the Flames, <laughs> DoorDash actually delivers. Okay, so these aren't really comments. Oh, these are okay. just this kind of just more shots, snide, snide comments, drive bys uh, here. Although we appreciate the uh, you know the name drop and the sponsors. Thank you, sponsors, for being a part of it. Um, if that's, uh, if that's all there is, then we can call it a night. It's probably it, Dean. There's lots out there. I feel like you could probably even find that live stream. If you really wanted to revisit the pain is that a masochist or a sadist, well, who's the people that mm. Oilers win it. They take the heritage classic. They move on. Now they've got that win that they needed to snap that streak. The flames will look to do that on Wednesday against the four one and one. Dallas Stars. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, people, for checking in, whether you're watching or listening. We appreciate you. Sure do. See you, buddies.